Hey, thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of the Christian Indie Artists and Songwriters Podcast. I'm your host, Brian, and on today's episode, we're going to talk about something that I think is really important and is how to actually make money from being an indie artist. How do you actually earn income streams, generate income on an artist's journey? Because at the end of the day, without generating income, it can be difficult to dedicate the time, resources, and effort to building a career. Now, that doesn't mean it's impossible, of course, because we can definitely continue on and it's a calling and we're doing this because we feel like we need to because such a time as this God has called us to this point in history right here and now to be sharing the songs that we have been given we've been working hard to write and record and release but we also have responsibilities we have mortgages we have rent we have kids we have food expenses we have insurance we have all these things we have to take care of so at a certain point, we have to do things that generate income to help us live our lives. So as an indie artist, it's really important to figure out ways to actually create income streams, not only just to be able to further the path, but also just as a way to almost use it as a barometer that we can tell, hey, this is working. You know, we are doing things that are generating income so we can put that aside, whether it's a separate account or not. That's sort of a side note is as an indie artist, you are a business. We are a business. So we have to treat it as such. So having a separate bank account and all these things, that could be a totally another episode. So if you want to see that episode where we talk about how to actually be a business as an artist, comment below, say, I want to see that episode, and we will do that on a future episode for sure. But on today's episode, I just want to give you some practical tips as how to actually make money as an indie artist. So the first way to create income as an indie artist is through streaming. Now, honestly, we live in the greatest time to be an indie artist of all time. Never before have we been able to write, record, release music, and all the stuff associated with that as far as social media, advertising, promotion, all from literally our home studio or our house, home office, or wherever we're working out of. And this has never been true in the, in the past. So we are in a great time to be doing that. And part of that is through streaming and digital distribution. So as we all know, there are lots and lots of songs, 60,000 songs uploaded to Spotify every day. So there is a ton of music being put out there. But we also know that Spotify being the mainstream platform currently, you're only getting about 0.025 cents per stream, meaning every four streams equals one penny. So it can take a ton of streams to generate a substantial income. But that's not to discourage because it can and does happen. And the more that we release the more that we write, the more we produce, the more we get music out into the world. All of that sort of compounds together. I've personally released getting close to 60 songs, and it doesn't generate a million dollars a month, but it is a regular amount of income that comes in every single month through DistroKid, and I can put it right into my account. Every month I can count on that, and it's growing over time. So don't let that little bit of stream streaming revenue discourage you because it is completely possible. And if you keep doing it, it will grow over time. And also you can still purchase music. There's still digital downloads of music. So obviously you earn more money when people actually purchase your music like through iTunes and Amazon and all these other stores. So when I'm saying streaming, I'm, I'm meaning more along the lines of just digital music in general as people can purchase and get your music and so a side note too i wanted to say is that you know one of the biggest parts of actually releasing music is of course the recording process and i know a lot of people get stuck on the idea of the roi the return on investment because you spend this much on a recording but then you have to get this many streams to equal that recording and a lot of times it takes a lot of streams to be able to pay off a high ticket recording. But one of the ways that I personally want to be able to help you with that is I released a music production course called Logic Pro X for Artists and Songwriters. And it basically walks through the entire process of recording a song. And it is step by step, every part of the way. And whether you want to dive into the whole recording process or not, I'd say it's really important and almost necessary to be able to at least record your vocals well. So if you click the link below, you can get a link to the Record Your Vocals Like a Pro module, which is the vocal module out of the full course, but the vocal module is free. So all I have to do is click the link below, create a login, and then it's yours to keep. Whether you decide to upgrade to the course or not, the vocal module is yours for free because like I said, especially in this connected, technologically advanced music age, being able to record your vocals well is a necessity because this way you don't have to necessarily go to a local studio if you don't want to, or depending on your situation, you can't find one. Also, you can collaborate with anyone anywhere. I know that 
I collaborate with people 99% of the time that don't even live in the same state as me. And we've been full time in this for working towards two years now. And that's all been remote production that have people have been able to record themselves. The next way you can earn money as an independent artist is through song royalties. Now, in every single release, there are two halves to the royalty generation. The first half is through, like we just talked about, streaming. It's the master recording, meaning that particular recording generates a certain amount of money per stream. Now, this is how you can record covers because you have ownership in the exact recording of the cover. You just have to get mechanical licensing and the mechanical licensing is essentially on the songwriting side, the royalty side. So the royalty side is basically you need to sign up for a PRO like ASCAP or BMI and then you can register your work and this is strictly on the songwriting side, whether it's a solo or a co-write and then ASCAP or BMI or whatever PRO you're on will be able to track and receive income on the copyright side and the songwriting side. So it's really important. Now this is typically a smaller amount, especially if you're splitting up in a co-write because it's only tracking as people use the music, but at the same time, everything adds up together. It's the compound of all these things. It's all your streaming revenue mixed in with your royalty generated revenue, and then all the other things we're gonna talk about, and all of those things kind of come together to create the actual revenue from your indie artistry. So really important to be in a PRO. If you have any questions about that, just comment below. Happy to help or steer you in the right direction for someone who can help you make sure that you have all that stuff together. Like my friend Holly Salazar said on one of the last episodes, doing the music admin part is just good stewardship of your songs and your music. So it's really important to dig in there. So the next thing, the way you can generate income as an indie artist is through placements. Now, this is something that I personally am super interested in. And I spent a lot of time producing and writing for sync placements and film and TV because there's actually a huge earning potential in this and it comes through getting placements. Now there's lots of services out there that you can join like a monthly membership and you can submit songs towards briefs and things and that's one way to do it. Or you could work with a publisher, they'll send you briefs and you can write and produce music towards those briefs opportunities. And some of these briefs, honestly, you could be in six figure territory from one placement and those songs can be used and placed over and over again. So there can be a huge and it can be a very successful full-time career as an independent artist through sync placements. Another thing too, as a side note, is music supervisors, who are, which are the people who actually are taking in the music and passing it on to their clients, they're really in support of indie artists. Similarly to how radio used to be too, where they would, they could take an artist and basically break an artist. So these music supervisors are the same way. They sort of have a lean towards indies. Of course, there's the big names, but the thing is, is you know, if a company's looking for, say, an Imagine Dragons song for their brief, but the Imagine Dragons song is hundred thousand dollars to get that license, you know, they might look for an independent artist who can do a similar vibe for a much lower price point. So indies are well positioned as long as you can write and produce quickly and get those songs to the right channels. There's actually a massive potential to earn money as an independent artist through sync placements. So the fourth way to generate income as an independent artist, of course, is through live events, concerts, shows. Now this has honestly been like one of the biggest ways that artists have made money, whether unsigned or signed in history. Even if you have a record deal, the labels are primarily taking the money from the investment of the recording while the artists are capitalizing on going out there and playing shows and earning income because obviously as the shows grow the more people that are invested into your music you can earn a great deal of money from playing concerts and live events but one of the more recent things due to everything going on in the world is that things can be virtual now virtual concerts and virtual events are very normalized and you can charge for these things. Now, maybe you don't do this at first. Maybe you just start doing sort of a weekly Facebook Live or Instagram Live or TikTok Live thing, and you start building up an audience. But then over time, maybe you can start having a ticket for these events. Because if you go to your Spotify, you'll see that they have a bunch of concerts of artists that you probably follow on Spotify that are hosting live paid concerts that are virtual. So it's totally possible and you can do this all from the comfort of your own home studio now i will say another side too with with services like twitch where people are going there to stream there's an entire music tab all on just doing live events where people can give you tips they can donate towards you so there's a ton of potential there and the thing that's great about this is now you don't necessarily have to just build a fan base in your local area because there's a lot that goes into that you know you have to have a good amount of people that have heard of you 
You have to have a good amount of people that are into what you do. And then it'll come support. And of course, friends and family, we can get there. But building a fan base organically is difficult. And this is the only way that bands could do this in the past is by building a local buzz in their area. And then depending on the scene, you may live in a town like I do where there's not really a music scene. There might be covers and things, but there's not like a music scene, you know, like you'd have in Nashville or New York or L.A. But with a virtual event, you can make a music scene anywhere. And if you get really surgical with it, you can actually target people who are into what you like through even running ads to build a fan base around your style of music. And then it can be a lot easier to start hosting virtual live concerts and earn a great living. I mean, I know for a fact that there are a lot of people, like I mentioned on Twitch in general, that are earning a full-time career as an independent artist just by streaming on one platform. So it's totally possible, totally doable, and it's a great way to earn money as an indie artist. And the fifth way to earn income as an independent artist is through merchandise. Now, just like with live concerts, merchandise, I feel like, is the second thing that most people think about when it comes to how to make money as an indie artist. Whether it's t-shirts, hats, posters, whatever it is, this is a great way to earn money. And the thing that's great too is as we just talked about things are so much more virtual now, things are a lot more hands-off. Merchandise is a way for a an, a fan to actually hold something, to actually have a physical connection with what you're doing. And that might seem like a little thing, but I feel like it's really powerful because it's one thing to watch someone on a screen and you know look up to them and think, wow, they're cool or I love their sound or whatever. But it's another thing to actually have a shirt wearing a shirt and representing that artist because that's a super fan that's going to go out and tell people about you and then whether you're doing live events or your latest single they're going to actually promote you know they'll share your music on social media too so merchandise is a great way to be a promotional tool but also a way to earn income and there are so many services now that will allow you to design high quality merchandise but not actually have to purchase inventory and then people can purchase directly through these sites so that you don't have to have an upfront initial investment. This may cut into the profit overall depending on how what the quantity is and things like that. So you look into those details, but you don't have to buy, you know, a thousand t-shirts and then sell 48 of them and then have 952 shirts in a box in your closet. Now you can totally sell all those shirts, but it can be a lot more cost effective to not have to do that big upfront expense while you sell. And you can host all this stuff on your website and show people the different things. You can update, you can do customized orders, you can, you know, exclusives. That's a great way to sell merch is do like limited time exclusive offers. So like you could do a shirt and then just do a, sh a version in red and say, you know, there's only 50 of these available. So if you'd like to get one, get one now because once they're gone, they're gone. So building that scarcity into your merchandise strategy can be a great way to actually have people purchase. And then all the while, you're earning a revenue, generating an income stream through your artistry. So the next thing is influencer marketing. Now, this is something that is born due to social media. And we all know what this is. When influencers or people with large followings partner with brands, and then they basically promote them and they receive some sort of income from that. Now, I will say income can be defined as getting free merch or swag or gift cards or whatever it might be. It may not necessarily be monetary, but it also could very well be monetary. And I think that just kind of depends on the particular deal. But we all need to be building up our social media with targeted fans of what we're doing. You know, just going and follow for follow and doing things just to kind of raise up our vanity metrics is not really helpful because those people won't engage and that'll actually hurt your algorithmic score on these platforms anyway. So as we're all building our social media following through our organic and authentic selves, then over time, as those things continue to, to grow more and more, we can potentially start partnering with brands and earn income that way. And I will say too, I don't think you have to have like massive hundreds of thousands of followers, millions of followers to do this. But if you're really clear in your messaging, if you have a really clear purpose and vision for your project, and there's a brand that has a similar vision or purpose for their company, it may be a natural fit and you don't have to have a huge following to accomplish that. And again, it's not going to come from day one necessarily because this takes time. You have to build your influence. You have to build up your brand so that people know that if, if a company wants to partner with you, they kind of know what you're doing and they know that you're going to actually be serving their target market along with your own. But there's so much potential here. And honestly, we all, we all know people, there's influencers out there that literally don't even do music at all. They just become like internet celebrities and they earn massive income from that. And that's not our route. We're we're putting out music and that's the, the main vessel of everything we're doing. But partnering with a brand can really help not only earn income, but also reach new audience. Because as you post for them, then there's more potential of that audience 
of the, that they've already had too that's going to come into your world and and see what you're doing and then follow along on your journey. So there's a lot of good things that can be accomplished through brand partnership as an independent artist. And the last thing I wanted to mention on how to earn money as an indie artist is through crowdfunding. This can mean a lot of different things. This could be like a GoFundMe campaign towards an actual recording or some kind of new venture that you're doing. Or it could be something like Patreon where it's sort of an ongoing subscription-based thing where your super fans will basically pay you a little bit each month to support you and your artistry. And I, I remember watching a video on Patreon and Patreon was actually started to support music. Now, side note, do you ever notice that there are so many of the really important parts of culture all sort of started because of music? Like, did you know that MySpace was started for bands? Like I just said, Patreon was started to support artists and musicians. You may not know this too, but the original app of TikTok was called Musical.ly, and it was created for musicians, and now it's the largest app in the world. So, side note, and I, I, I don't know if anyone notices these things but me, but, but music is such an important part of culture, and it starts so many important things. With that, there's a lot of people out there that want to help support you on your music journey, and they're willing to actually donate towards it. And the thing that's great is it doesn't really take that much. If you have 500 people, which may seem like a lot, but really 500 people, I mean, there's 500 people on your street right now. 500 people to give you $10 a month, that could be $5,000 a month times 12 months. That's $60,000 a year from just 500 people doing $10 a month. So that's just one example of how quickly it adds up. Through services like Patreon, you can easily create different curriculums and all you do is you just give your fans special bonus content this might be special private live concerts this might be alternate versions acoustic versions of your music this might be lyric video who knows you can do a ton of searching on figuring out what the best way is to build up and give your patrons the, the things they need. But essentially, it's like hosting a community of people that want to support you and your music. And again, this might not be something that you can do from day one, but it honestly could be and start building up because you may only have a couple people that start. It might be your mom and your dad, or it might be your grandma. Who knows who it might be? But starting it, I think, from the from the ground up, I think is great. And the clearer you are on your vision, people know where you're going, and if they want to support that that ministry or that vision, then just give them something to hold on to and they can totally do it. And you can quickly generate a lot of income just from having some sort of crowdfunding because people want to support artists. People can feel that. They, they can relate and they want to support you because they know that you're passionate and you're driven about that. And people want to get behind those kind of things. So Patreon or you know crowdfunding in general is a great way to earn income as an independent artist. So now looking at all of these things, the combinations are endless and there might be some things that, that you already do that I didn't even mention here. And if so, comment below and let me know what didn't I mention that you're doing that's working for you because the point of this podcast is to help Christian Dierris and songwriters just like you get songs heard. Now, that doesn't mean it all needs to come from me. God is using this in a big way. There's I'm hearing more and more stories about people that are getting inspired and putting music out because of this podcast. So if you have something to add, definitely put it in the comments below if you're here on YouTube or shoot me an email at, at brianbolivermusic.com. I'd love to connect with you and hear your story and hear what's working for you. But with that, it's the combination of all these things. Because if you have streaming coming in, you have royalties coming in, maybe you get some placements coming in, and then you start booking some live or virtual events, and then you have some merch available, and then you possibly can get some opportunities in influencer marketing to start, and then you add in some crowdfunding, and you can see that it really is not impossible to think that you could create a substantial income with a combination of these things. Obviously varying levels, but really they all kind of feed into each other. Maybe your website's your central hub for all these things and that's where people go and they can see all the ways that they can help support you on your journey. People are gonna support what they can understand. So being clear and being authentic in what you're doing and presenting there, everything kind of ties together is a really good way to let people know what you're all about so that they can figure out how they can support you. So I hope that that helps. I hope that that all makes sense. Again, if you have any questions about any of that or if you have ideas of your own, comment below here on YouTube or send me an email at brianbalvermusic.com. Don't forget to click the link below and get Record Your Vocals Like a Pro. Being able to record your vocals like a pro in the module, we walk through how to edit, and tune and do all the things to make pro sounding vocals from your home studio. And I would honestly say it's it's basically a have to at this point to be able to do that because if you can record vocals from your home studio on your own, you can either do your own production demo work or you can send it out and people can tune and edit and make it sound perfect for your release. So I'd say it's really important 
It's a free module. Just click the link below, log in, and it's yours to keep and refer to. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the CIAS podcast. I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you next Friday at 5 a.m. Eastern.